Okay, this brief presentation is, is going to talk about classifications in iLab. It's a technique to help your services be found a little bit more easily than maybe they have been in the past. Most of us know that when we've worked with search engines like Google or Bing, that the results we get from our search are very dependent on the specific search terms we use. The better that we use the search terms, the more specific answers that we get. Unfortunately, our users don't always know the correct terms to search uh, for things in iLabs, or they get hung up on a very specific term that they've read about, or they may n not know that an instrument can perform a certain technique because they haven't associated the, the type of instrument with the technique. iLab uses classifications to make the instruments and services more discoverable. Uh, classifications are based on an ontology that was developed by a group called the Eagle Eye Consortium. An ontology is, is a, um, a list of terms. It's often structured kind of like an outline uh, that is very specific and, and structured and um, works well with databases because it's always the same terms. And it's much like the way blogs or uh, content is tagged on the internet so that it can be found and sorted more easily. Just as a quick background, the Eagle Eye Consortium began as a way to share information between, uh, a number, between nine institutions ranging from Harvard to the University of Hawaii. And they wanted particularly to share information about their core facilities and the reagents and, and, and things so that they understood exactly what each one of them had. The consortiums expanded and, and now include 750 cores. So there's probably terms for every core that we have that's, that are already in the ontology. iLab uses this uh, structured ontology to allow us to tag our instruments so that people can find what they need. So why bother? Well, there's a lot of cores on campus, and some of them have a fairly significant overlap in instrumentation and services. If your core happens to be the one that's more easy to discover, that may mean that you'll end up with a few more users finding yours, your facility rather than going to a similar facility on campus. Or if they find your, neither your facility or the other one, they may go somewhere else to another campus, because iLab allows you to look more broadly besides uh, just on our, our particular campus. So the more comprehensive your classification list is, the greater your chance of being found. I'm a microscope guy, so here's some uh, classifications that I was able to pull up for uh, this particular microscope. You can see there's quite a few different things that it can do, and it has, and that describe it. Um, so keep, in, keep those sorts of things in mind. It takes a little bit of work to look things up in the ontology, uh, but you'll only have to do it once for each instrument or each service. And things to think about is you're, you're trying to describe the hardware, the software, the kind of techniques that you can perform with the instrument, the services that you may provide if you're more of a service lab, the reagents that you use, the organisms or specimen types that it applies to. So it's, it's very specific. And there's a lot of things in the uh, ontology. And you can go to the website and start searching for things and type in a term. And don't be satisfied with a list of three or four. You might be able to come up with as many as I did for that microscope. So keep your running list, which uh, you know, if you're, for example, a mass spectrometry lab and you have several instruments that will qualify as mass specs, then you could also uh, have multiple terms that apply to different instruments in your core. And um, you can add those classifications to schedules and into services. You just open the configuration for each using the pencil icon, or in some places it's a small gear icon, and I'll show you in a moment. So we're going to jump to iLab for a demonstration. OK, so here's the, my microscope that we used before. Let's open the uh, or edit the microscope by going behind the scenes. 
So this is the first page that, page that comes up. Here's the description that we were looking at in that list. And here are the classifications. So um, let's see. I think we had something about band pass filters. There we go. So you can add those to it. And you can keep adding and keep adding. And then when you're done, remember to click Save. And that's it. On the services side, so I'm also part of a lab in the Cancer Center that provides services. And here's one called H&E staining. If you've ever worked with paraffin sections on, and looked at them on a microscope, the H&E is that blue and sort of magenta or purpley pink stain. So let's go into here to edit this and make sure it's properly tagged. Okay, so right down here, again, this is the first screen that shows up. Here's classifications. So it's a histological sample preparation, hematoxylin and eosin stain. Uh, let's see if it has paraffin. You can see we can you can search the ontology this way. It's not as efficient, and there are so many things in here. Let's see if it says something like slide. Okay. So this may be all the tags that this needs, um, and then you can just. Scroll down until you come to the Save button. Click Save, and that's now updated. So that's it. It's pretty easy, and uh, I hope you'll try it and get your, uh, your lab and the services and the, the uh, equipment better classified. And I have in this demo, uh, P this PDF that will be a available also some information about finding these classifications. That's it. Thanks.